Hey fellas, Dan Brokos from Lead Faucet Tactical out here filming another episode of Recoil Training Tune-Ups. Today we're gonna to talk about carbine malfunctions, specifically five of them. Stuck casing, bolt override or bolt over base, charging handle impingement, a double feed, and a stove pipe. Today, we are in an administrative setting. Carbine is dry, all of our rounds are expended. You need to practice this with live ammo because that's how it really happens. I'm gonna talk through these dry and then we're gonna execute a drill to show you how it looks. But either or, we need to practice in an administrative setting before we go hot on the range. All right, fellas, our first malfunction is the stuck casing. How does the stuck casing happen? There's a lot of reasons it could happen. Primarily what I see is bad ammunition. There's a little dent or imperfection in your casing and when that heat and it expands in your chamber it creates an odd shape so it's going to get stuck in your chamber how do we set this thing up well we always got a malfunctions tool on our belt and i'll talk about how to clear malfunctions with this later i'm just going to go a little bit above halfway down crimp my casing again more dry nothing in the chamber stick it on in Slam my bolt, hit my forward assist. Again, administratively dry, nothing in my magazine. I know in reality we would be hot and we'll get through that when we do some practical application. So I'm on my trigger, squeeze nothing, tap, rack. Attempt to put the weapon on safe, it's not gonna go. Telltale sign of a stuck casing. I can't get my finger in between my bolt carrier group and my chamber. I see no light and my charging handle barely moved. My next step, remove my source of feed. Collapse my buttstock. That way, when I hit it, it doesn't break. When I hit this, it has to be straight up and down. If I hit it at an angle, I could break my buttstock. My right hand is grabbing and pulling on my charging handle vigorously as I mortar it straight into the ground. Casing ejects, I can keep my charging handle open. I inspect my chamber. Nothing in there, reclops my buttstock, load it up, and I can go hot. And that is our stuck casing. Hey fellas, our next malfunction is bolt override, bolt over base. How does that happen? There's a lot of reasons. Dirty blaster, improper maintenance on ejection and extraction springs. I see it, it's a relatively common malfunction, and the biggest mistake I see with it is people treating it like a stuck casing and mortaring it. And then we're gonna have to pull out the old hammer and chisel just to fix your blaster. I like doing that, only when they're not my blaster though. How do we set this up? Again, we're dry. Locker bolt to the rear. Make sure your charging handle is forward because that's how it's actually gonna happen. And once again, we're administratively dry. You need to rehearse these with live ammunition in a magazine on the range. I'm gonna take my empty casing, drop it up into my charging handle well. Release my bolt, and that's what I have. Again, dry magazine, put it in there. I'm on my blaster, nothing happens, tap, rack. Telltale sign about this one is when I rack it, I get about a couple inches of play with my charging handle. Move all the way back. I can fit everything in here. Attempt to put it on safe, remove my source of feed. Now, there's no need to mortar this, fellas. All I have to do is pinch vigorously on my bolt catch, pull back until I meet resistance with my charging handle. Don't gouge it back and simply knife cutting edge, let gravity take forward, tap it. I'm gonna be good to go. Hey fellas, our next malfunction is charge and handle impingement syndrome. How does that happen? Well, usually we get positive extraction, but bad ejection of the round, and the round is still sticking on my bolt face, but tilted up into my charging handle well. How do we set this up? Of course, we're dry, locker weapon to the rear, take an empty casing, place it right on 
the bolt, tilted backwards, release my bolt carrier group. Empty magazine, insert. I'm on the blaster, nothing, tap, rack, telltale sign, charging handle moves slightly. I look, I can fit three fingers in there. I can see the round during day that's stuck up. Attempt to put the weapon on safe, remove my source of feed. I'm simply gonna grasp right here vigorously because it's gonna want to get away from me. Pull back on my charging handle till I meet slight resistance and just simply tap forward. Round falls out, I'm clear, we can load her up and go hot. That's charging handle impingement syndrome. Hey fellas, our next malfunction is a double feed. Our previous malfunctions we've set up with the expended casings and we can practice those pretty much anywhere because we weren't live or hot. This one, we really can't do that, so we're gonna be oriented in a safe direction on a flat range and we have to induce this malfunction with live ammo, so it's really just not realistic. Bolt is locked to the rear. I do have live ammo. I'm pointed in a safe direction. I insert my magazine. I just feather my bolt carrier group until I have two rounds fighting to get in the chamber. And that's what a double feed is, two rounds fighting to get in that chamber. I'm gonna hop on the gas, nothing, tap, rack. Attempt to put the weapon on safe. Telltale sign is my charging handle went all the way to the rear, two fingers. My bolt carrier group's usually about halfway with a double feed. Another telltale sign, it's very difficult to remove my magazine. Remove my source of feed. Lock my bolt to the rear. Return my charging handle. Reach up, let gravity take over with two fingers, insert them in the magwell. Dig them around until those two rounds fall out. Spec my chamber, load her up, and I can go hot again. That is a double feed. Hey fellas, we just talked how to clear a double feed. I'm gonna show you one of the primary causes of double feeds, and that is a bad magazine. I need to load my magazines with about 15 to 20 rounds, don't top them all the way off, and inspect each feed lip. Right here, I'm gonna inspect the right feed lip. Nothing happens. I'm gonna inspect the left feed lip. Round flew out, right feed lip, left feed lip. Why is that causing a, a double feed? Just think about it. As my bolt carrier group's moving back, it sends all these rounds down in the magazine spring. Hits my buffer, feeds the next round in chambers. If I have a bad feed lip on either side, as that bolt carrier group's moving past, that round is gonna shoot up just like I did into the chamber, then it's gonna feed another one off and then we have two rounds fighting to get in the chamber and that's what a double feed is. So make sure you inspect your magazines. Why'd this cause it? I got a little crack in the back of my magazine. No matter if it's a polymer mag or an aluminum mag, they crack in the back and sometimes you can't notice them. I would never deploy or put this in my duty rifle, but I would train with it. So make sure you inspect your magazines. They're a telltale sign of a double feed. Hey fellas, the next malfunction we're gonna cover with the carbine is the stovepipe. How does the stovepipe happen? Usually, I see them if we're in an awkward position with our weapon relative to the ground or shooting next to a, a piece of cover we're building where that round is bouncing off and hopping right back into it. Now again, we're dry and we'll talk about how we set this up. We're gonna get an expended case right here you gotta think about this. As this is cycling back and I was hot and it feeds another round in here, it has extracted and ejected this round. It hits the ground or hits something and comes back in either way. So 99% of the time, that is going to be this round will already be in the chamber as this bounces back in and I have this configuration right here. Empty magazine. If I see this right here and I'm shooting behind and I get this, because it's not all the way, all I gotta do is sweep that and you see my bolt carrier group went in the battery and I'll be right hot back on it. If I don't catch it, there's nothing wrong with immediately tap racking as well and it should clear it as well as long as I tilt it a little bit and we should be tilting it on a tap rack. Hey fellas, we just covered a lot of malfunction with our carbine. 
Pretty soon we're gonna show you the practical application on how you train these. Don't forget, there is a very popular shoot and induce malfunction and that's an improperly seated magazine. Probably the number one malfunction out there I see on the circuit and in the schoolhouse when I was active duty. Along with that, recognize that in these polymer mags, you can load 31 rounds into there. And that's a big deal when we come time to do attack reload with one round already in the chamber, that magazine is not gonna seat properly. So make sure you inspect your magazines and load them properly. 30 rounds, right hand feed. 31, left hand feed. We're, in a, we're on a range pointed in a safe direction. I don't have eyes and ears. I'm not gonna shoot, I just wanna show you. We got one in the chamber. I come behind cover to execute attack reload. Stick this in, as soon as I move, it's gonna fall out. I seated it good, but it ain't gonna stick with 31 rounds in there. Make sure you inspect your magazines and load them properly. Hey fellas, we just talked about five malfunctions in a shooter induced malfunction. Behind me, there's three blasters set up. My boy set up three of the malfunctions. I don't know what they are. When he says go, I'm gonna turn around, run up, and clear these malfunctions. Put a couple rounds down range. Because that's the reality of it. We're gonna have hot guns when these malfunctions happen. It is daylight, and if you're not familiar with these malfunctions, go ahead and look at the malfunction so you see what it looks like. I sort of talked about when we explain the malfunctions, finger depth into the chamber, um, and it sort of tells you what type of malfunction it is. So I'm gonna go up and just use feel. I'm not gonna look at the malfunction. By feel of how far that bolt carrier group travels, how far my charging handle travels, I'll be able to know what type of malfunction it is. Let's see what we got. Bolt override. Weapon on safe, on the ground. Stuck casing. Weapon on safe. Double feed. Weapon on safe. There you have it. Cleared all three. I can tell by feel. Double feed, stuck hard magazine to get out. Stuck casing, charging handle didn't move. Bolt override, move slightly, two fingers. Have at it, train hard.